Arsenio Hall show was like the first late night platform for hip hop, mm -hmm. period, yeah. in the history of the world, pretty much. I mean, like, Johnny Carson was going to have the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. And, you know, I was proud of that because I, I tell Russell Simmons this all the time. Um, and anybody else that'll listen to me, because I try to thank those guys when they were young, when LL Cool J was young, when Russell Simmons was young, um, I would put out offers. And, and, and I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Uh, I would put out offers to old veteran musicians. Um, I don't have to mention names, but people I grew up loving. And I would get a no. Hmm. And I was like, that's crazy. So um, Stephen and are saying no. Tom Jones is saying no, and these African-American iconic figures that I grew up watching are saying no, and I got it. They were saying no because we do the Johnny Carson show, Arsenio, mm -hmm. and that made total sense. They're friends of Johnny's. They've done it for years. I'm this new kid that comes along, and so I had to sit and figure it out. And talking to Russell one day, it kind of focused me because he was telling me about this guy he knew that he was working with that was living with his grandmother. That's how old this kid was. I think this kid might have been 19. Mm -hmm. And the career was so young, he called him James. And after we continued talking about James, I realized that him and Rick Rubin were working with a gentleman who professionally was gonna be called LL Cool J. Mm -hmm. That period changed my life because I put LL Cool J on my Fox show. This is before the Paramount Arsenio Hall show, mm -hmm. before coming to America. I'm playing around for 11 weeks on this Fox show. I put LL on. I put Houdini on. Mm -hmm. And the numbers popped, as we say in the business. Right. The ratings looked good. And they had given me that show to hold on to because they had kind of had a, a, a battle with Joan Rivers and she left. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure all the details, but she left. I'm sitting there and it starts to work. And I realize instead of going after the old school, and instead of going after the people that have had an allegiance to Johnny for years, mm -hmm. there's a generation of people out there that have never been on a talk show, yes. that go on talk shows and don't get to talk. Like, people like Stevie Wonder would say to me, you know, I, I've, I've done the show, but they don't let me uh, talk on the couch. And, and that meant something to me. I'm having yeah. a gentleman on this Friday named Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory was a stand-up comic when I was a young man, and I used to watch him go on shows. And one day he demanded that after his stand-up, they let him sit and talk. And when they said no, he said, well, then I won't come on. Hmm. And they had to break, and that's what broke it. Johnny Carson had to let a black comic do his stand-up and then come sit. So I'm gonna talk about him, um, uh, when, uh, talk about that Friday night when he comes. But um, Basically, hip-hop saved my life, man. Hip-hop gave me a career. Because, sure, there's Bill Clinton, and sure, there are all the actors and actresses that came along, but it's being able to put Will Smith on that performs parents just don't understand, and mm -hmm. uh, all those things that brought a culture. And, and when I say culture, I don't mean black. I mean the hip-hop culture. It brought this whole new culture. Because don't forget, I had kids with pants on backwards. They weren't even right. sagging. They were on backwards. Chris you know, Cross. Yeah, there's all kind of stuff going on then. I was bringing this into the living rooms of people who could safely watch it <laughs> and get to understand it. And that's really why it worked. Um, you know, America, um, uh, the greatest thing about this country is the us part of it. You know, that, that entire melting pot. And I got to add some things to the Booyah base back in the day. Um, Don Cornelius is an idol, mm -hmm. was an idol. Oprah, an idol. Um, but they didn't like hip hop. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I think Oprah would be cool with me saying that until she started hanging out with Jay-Z, it wasn't on Oprah's radar. Oprah wasn't in Chicago saying, when does Common perform, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's not what she was dealing with. And so I got to have all that. Yeah. You know, that became the great story. Don Cornelius did not like Q-tip. <laughs> so I got all that. Mm -hmm. And through default and through timing of pop and hop and the way it unfolded in America, I got to be that guy in the right place at the right time. 
and it changed my life. Now the hard part now is you can turn on Fallon or turn on Kimmel or any Jimmy. They all got rappers. They all got rappers. Mm -hmm. And they might sit and talk to the big ones, the Rick Rosses of the world and the Kanye's of the world. Mm -hmm. So I don't do anything unique now. And uh, I think the thing that's getting me over is that hip hop culture that saved my life and formulated my career is still there for me. And uh, they know what I did. So they do my show. They all come back. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, and, and, and what's really great is you can be talking to Will Smith's wife, Jada, and during commercial look at Twitter and see that Jaden Smith has tweeted and he's working on his new material and he's going to come on the show soon. And you're realizing that you're able to thread these demos because I got a generation that grew up on me mm -hmm. and then I have that generation following them. And, and I have guys on all the time who were young hip-hop heads watching, hoping that they could spit one day on that show. So uh, now they're coming. You know, Tyler the Creator and Childish Gambino. That entire crew of young men uh -huh. were watching and waiting. And so there's a place for me once again. And as a result of it, I, you know, I, I read this week that I'm tied with Seth Meyer for having the youngest demo in late night. That's really important, especially for the old guy. The fact that I can still connect and that in late night, when young kids look to who they, uh, when young kids look to who they can relate to, it's me and Seth and then it's Slim Pickens. I love being in that stat. Dave is gone now. Dave was the best, man. I mean, you and I came up about the same time. While I was doing my hip hop thing and doing that alternative programming thing, I was watching Dave as a young man. I watched Dave in college. Uh, I always tell people when they ask me about hosting, if you haven't stolen something from Dave, you're doing it wrong because Dave was a bad man. I mean, he mm -hmm. redefined it and broke a lot of the rules, including putting a suit with tennis shoes, you know, <laughs> which they made him stop doing later on when he went to CBS. But, uh, Bottom line is he's leaving, Chelsea's leaving. Um, I was hoping Chelsea would go and uh, kind of take the CBS job because that would add some diversity there. And I haven't forgotten who you are and where you're from. I know Chelsea likes rappers. Mm -hmm. And that would be good for hip hop if Chelsea was on CBS. That's where I was going. But, uh, but that's not going to happen. It's going to be Stephen Colbert and we'll see how that works out. But anyway, back to 